at last, thank you. Uh, yeah, as I say, I'm Richard Shannon. I work as a theatre director, a radio drama producer, and a playwright. And uh, all of my practice feeds into my teaching. If I didn't do it in the real world, I don't think I could teach it. So, and this is true of all my colleagues in the media department and in the theatre department. They are filmmakers, they are producers, uh, so you'll be working with people who are working in the real world as well as in the world of, of academia. Okay, I hope this thing is going to work. And now it's not working. Oh no! Um, okay, I can talk even if my presentation doesn't work. Um, oh, something. Did something happen? No, nothing. It's not working. Okay, while, while my esteemed colleague sorts me out, I shall... Um, yeah, the, 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 when I press enter, it just doesn't... Mm -hmm. It just makes new slides. It doesn't move the, the, the thing on. Um, my starting point for plays is to think about character. Yeah? Oh, something happened. <laughs> and character is really important in any play. Um, you can come up with a story and stick character in it, but personally I think you need to really understand your characters first before you can write the stories. Okay? Okay. Oh, there we go. It's working. Thank you very much. Kamsamnida. Anyong hasio, you see? I can speak Korean. Um, John Goldsworthy is a very famous British playwright and novelist, and he said that a human being is the best plot there is. The dramatist who hangs his character to his plot instead of his plot to his character is guilty of committing a cardinal sin. This is my point. You need to be really interested in the characters before you can actually develop the whole play. Oh yeah, it's working, good. Um, Strindberg, uh, has anyone ever read Strindberg or heard of him? A Swedish playwright and in his most famous play, Miss Julie, he says this, my characters are made up of scraps from newspapers, fragments of humanity, torn shreds of once fine clothing that have become rags in just the way that a human soul is patched together. Now the reason I wanted to show you this is I wanted to introduce you to the idea that you can create character from anywhere, from a newspaper, uh, from yourself, from your memories, your family, but also you should be really rude and listen to people's conversations. On the, on the tube and on the bus. Don't write it down while you're listening because they'll know. Do it when you get home. I have heard the most extraordinary stories on the bus in London. You would not believe. People's lives are far more fascinating and strange than any story. So human beings are your raw material, okay? Um, now, this uh, playwright, Gubrik Bhatti, um, she wrote an extraordinary, powerful play about uh, a case of rape in a, in a Gurdwala, which is a Sikh temple. It was a true story, and the, the elders of the Sikh community surrounded the theatre and closed the whole show down. She had to go into hiding for her life for a year. The reason I tell you this story is theatre has the power to really change people and have a political effect. She was telling a true story and uh, it became very, very hard for her to tell that story. Now, I don't know, I've been to Korea three times, but I don't know the politics well enough, but I guess there are stories which would be hard to tell. Um, I know you had that terrible uh, ferry accident when so many young people, so many students died. I'm sure someone is writing a play or a film looking at that, but it will be an incredibly hard story to tell because it's real. Um, now she talks about characters having a secret wound, a secret wound. What do you think I mean or what does she mean by a secret wound? Anybody, stick your hand way up in the air so I can see. I shall, I shall jump on someone if you don't volunteer. Yeah? Yeah, you, were, you had your hand moving so. <laughs> This is the trouble. If anybody scratches their nose, I'm going to ask them. Yeah, what is a secret wound, do you think, in terms of character? I don't know. Maybe... Hey, have a guess. Somebody want to help? 
Okay, what's a wound? Yeah, just, just define a wound in English. Trauma, scar, exactly. And if it's secret, it probably means it's inside you. You can't see it on your body. It's something that happened to you that is inside you that, that never leaves you. Now, every single one of you, you're young adults, you will have the, something in your life that has deeply affected you that you will never forget. Even when you're, you're my age, yeah? And I'm very young. But even when you're my age, you will, you will never forget that. So when you're writing a character, think, what is it that has changed them that they will tell nobody? It's very important. Okay. Oh, now we've got a lot of blank screens. We'll get there in the end. Yeah. Has anybody heard of the writer James Baldwin? He's a black African-American gay writer of the last century. He's now dead. One of the finest novelists I think I've ever read. And in this book, Another Country, which I'm sure will have been translated into Korean, he says this, and the book is about a novelist and the struggle to write. He did not seem to know enough about the people in his novel. They were waiting for him to find the key, press the nerve and tell the truth. Okay, what is the most important word in that, those two sentences, do you think? Truth. Yes, well done, thank you. The truth. I really urge you, in your work as playwrights or screenwriters, some of you, you may wish to write film, it's the same deal. Tell the truth, yeah? And sometimes you will, you will, it will be really hard for you to deal with the stories because it will affect you. When I'm writing, if I'm not crying or laughing, there's a problem, yeah? I've got to be my first audience and experience it as I write. Yeah. Who has heard of Anton Chekhov? Anybody? Anybody read any Chekhov? Chekhov. He's a Russian writer from the uh, 19th century again. He said this, tell me what you want and I'll tell you who you are. Why is that important for a character in a play? Yeah? Did you have an idea? What's your name? Oxley. My name is Lee. Yes, they act for their desire. You're absolutely right. Every single character uh, has a desire, a need, and they will pursue that relentlessly in the play. So you need to be aware every single one of your characters has to want something. And this is basic human instinct. Everybody in this room wants something. Maybe it's a cup of coffee or maybe they want to go out with someone in the room. I don't know. Maybe they want to go to, maybe they want to go on holiday. I don't know. But everybody wants something. So you need to know what your characters want because it will also, this, this is important, tell you who they are, yeah? Because many people hide their true desire. They wear a mask all the time. Also, people have multiple identities. A character isn't just one person. Every single one of you will behave differently when you meet me. You don't know me. So you're not saying anything. If I meet you in the pub and we, we, we spend three weeks together, you'll be talking a lot, I think, I hope. But when you speak to your mom or your professor at university, it will always be different. So be aware your characters are just like you. Okay? Good. And by the way, please stop me if I say anything you, you don't like or you don't understand. Yeah? Okay. Um... I love this quote, drama is the discovery of what people want and why they can't have it. Why is this important to a story? Let me tell you, let me tell you a story. A man gets up in the morning, he brushes his teeth, he has his, um, uh, I don't know what, his, his, his breakfast, um, he goes uh, to work, he comes home, he goes to bed. Is that interesting? No, it's really boring. How would we make that story really interesting and dramatic? What would we have to do to that story? Any ideas? Okay, I'll give you one idea, then you give me some more, right? He trips over the dog 
and breaks his leg, number one, uh, maybe. Or he's in such a rush, he gets up late, his alarm clock does not go off, he's late, he rushes for a taxi, he has no money, so the taxi driver says, I can't take you, and the guy kills the taxi driver, steals the car. <laughs> now we're talking. Now we're talking. This is drama, right? So, so you need to think about the way an ordinary day will be broken by something that changes everything. Yeah? Now, in any film that you see, this will be the structure. Um, can anybody tell me a film they've seen lately? that they liked, that maybe has relationship to this? Yeah? What's the, late, what's the most recent film you've ever seen? What? Mistress of the Afternoon. Oh, okay. Uh, what's that about? It, it was a old American film by my brain. So I think it has no drama. Oh, okay, not like this. Okay, so never mind. Any film, I think, from Hollywood will have the hero or the heroine come up against a brick wall, and then we want to know how they get round it or through it, don't we? And then they keep bashing against something, getting over it, and then right at the end, do they get the girl or the boy, or do they die? What happens? So in your play, you've got to make things difficult. Otherwise, you've got a guy brushing his teeth, having breakfast, going to work, coming home and going to bed. Yeah? You don't want that. You want your audience to be interested. You want your audience on the edge of the seat. Not like this with the popcorn. Yeah? Okay, good. Noel Gregg, a writer sadly no longer with us, he said this, Real character is only revealed when the individual is put under pressure. That is when events conspire to force them to make choices. Okay. In my stupid story, the guy kills the taxi driver because he's desperate to get to work. He never knew that he was a murderer before that moment. It was only the pressure of, oh my God, I'm going to be late, that he turns into a monster, right? Now you will know whether any of you are monsters when you're late. <laughs> yeah? I don't, I don't want to know. You don't have to tell me. It's fine. Um, but pressure changes us, doesn't it? When you're under pressure, you behave differently. Sometimes you will discover that you are very courageous, you're very brave. And sometimes you'll find you're not. You run away. And sometimes you do both. One day you're really courageous, the next day you fall apart. People are unpredictable, people are unexpected. And you need to create real characters. They need to have all these different parts to them. Yeah? Otherwise, the character is flat. Two-dimensional, yeah? Okay. This play, has anyone recognized this image? It's from a famous Shakespeare play. Macbeth. Well done, yes, good. <laughs> has anyone else read Macbeth or seen it? Yeah, great. It's a fantastic story. I think it's his best play because it's his shortest, right? <laughs> it's really cool. Um, I'm making an audio drama, a podcast of Macbeth, um, we're going to record it in a castle in Scotland in 3D audio. It's going to be amazing, I hope. But if you get the chance to see a film of Macbeth or read it, reading it is hard, isn't it? You know, because it's old-fashioned English. Um, but you should see the film. There are plenty of films of Macbeth. Uh, Michael Fassbender, yeah, made a really, I thought, a quite good film. You know, not too bad. Okay. Ah, this is more complicated. This is quite difficult. Does anyone know what this word means in English, transgression? Anybody want to guess? Okay. Uh, have you, you don't have to tell me what you did, but I want you to be really honest and put your hand up right now if I ask you this question, okay? Have you ever done something that was forbidden? None of you? You're so good. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. You must have done something. Well, listen, you've got plenty of time in your life to do something that's forbidden. Please, get on with it. Do something that's, that breaks the rules. Seriously, this is important for character. When Macbeth decides to kill the king, he breaks the biggest rule of all. But not only because it's wrong to kill the king, it's because, do you remember what else is wrong about him killing the king? Where's the king come to stay? In Macbeth's? 
Not in his tent, but it's in his house, in his castle. It could be in a tent, yeah, like it was in the film. But you don't kill a guest, do you? That is really, really bad. It's really seriously a sin, if you like. But characters become exciting when they cross the line. And, you know, when you cross the line, you learn something about yourself, which is so fundamental, because you are also taking a big risk when you cross the line. In Romeo and Juliet, which I guess everyone knows the story basically, Shakespeare's famous romance of two young people who come together, but their families really are at war. I mean, I don't know if any of you are already married or you have any intentions, but it's always good to have your parents like the other person, right? And if they don't, or your boyfriend or your girlfriend, if they don't, it's a real pain in the butt because it's embarrassing apart from anything else. In Romeo and Juliet, it was a matter of life and death. But both these people loved each other so much, they crossed the line. They broke the rules. They did the thing that was forbidden. So, think about your characters, how important that might be to them. Because it creates dramatic conflict. And conflict is absolutely central to any drama. Yeah? The guy who goes, brushes teeth, goes to work, has a lunch, goes to bed, watches the telly, sleeps. There's no conflict. He's happy. Happy's boring. I want to be happy, but it's boring, right? Nobody wants to hear about how happy I am. Yeah? Yeah? I'm very happy to be here, but hey, you don't want to know that. So, okay. Okay, this is a very simple question, and I guess anyone can know, but why is a character like an iceberg? And this is a lovely picture we have of, of an iceberg. What do you think the iceberg means? Yeah? Speak, please. That's no, okay, don't be embarrassed. What's your name? Quarin. 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 So, why is a character, do you think, like an iceberg? Uh, Keep, keeping it in. Very good. Keeping it in. Basically, Today you're meeting me and I'm performing like a, you know, like a, like a comedy act, right? I'm doing my best to entertain you for a little bit. <laughs> but, but all you see is this bit of me, right? You don't see any of this. You don't know anything about me at all, any more than I know anything about you guys. But all of us will have all of this below the surface. So just tell me now, what do you think are the things that could be below the surface in all of us? There are lots of different things. What, what has made us who we are? I'll give you a start. For example, memory, right? What else? What has influenced us? Yeah. You had your hand up. Happy, Happy? yeah. Habits, yeah. Habits, very good. Anything else? Experiences. You might have had some terrible experiences in your life. Maybe you were bullied at school, or maybe you, your best friend was killed. You know, anything. Tremendously important things happen to you. What, what else influences you that's going to affect all this stuff? Your mind, absolutely. Your mental health as well. What about your parents? I bet your parents have a big influence in your life, right? Yeah? Either good or bad, I don't know. <laughs> Pressure. Um, there's a whole load of stuff that happens below the surface. Dreams, desires, sexuality, all sorts of things happen and you as writers need to know as much as you can about what happens below the surface uh, of, of the dialogue. Now, when two characters are talking, they could be talking about a cup of coffee, right? Say I'm character A and character B. Character A is in love with character B, but she or he doesn't know that, but I, I, will, I want to buy a cup of coffee. So, if I'm really in love, I might say, do you want to, can I buy you a, a cup of coffee? <laughs> That's terrible acting, I know. But you could tell that I'm in love with character B, right? Yeah, it's, it's obvious, very, very cheesy. She or he's not going to love me because I'm just terrible. It's so obvious. So, this is called subtext, yeah? The, the meaning underneath the ordinary meaning, the surface the surface meaning of the words, yeah? Again, I'm not going to ask you to give me examples, but I bet there have been times in your life when you've said something to somebody, maybe you really like them, and it is just, look, do you want to 
do you want to do this or can I get you a glass of water or whatever it is. But the meaning is much deeper, much more powerful. So think about that. Okay. Um, this, I will, I will let your, your um, teachers and your, the people here have a this copy of this PowerPoint. Um, this, uh, if this works, we'll try it out. But if, uh, I'm just to see if it'll, it'll do, go to a hyperlink here. I've done a big diagram of, um, if it works, of um, the below the surface stuff. So if it'll take us there, which I don't think it's going to, no, never mind. <laughs> never mind. Not everything works. When you get home tonight, I want you to draw a big iceberg and water line. And I want you to write in the bottom part of the iceberg all the things you could think go to make a character. But you can do that tonight. We won't waste time now. All right? It'll be a good exercise for you. Oh, it's working. Oh, no, it's not working there. It's working here. Never mind. Forget that. So, um, oh, no, now my, my stuff isn't working at all. Wait a minute. Bear with me. This is embarrassing. Stop D talking about yourselves. Um, uh, is anybody here? Can I help, please? I can't see my, my pointer. Oh, ah, there we are. We're back in business. Okay. This is a play that I wrote about um, a, uh, Aung San Suu Kyi. Who knows who she is, Aung San Suu Kyi, in Myanmar? Yeah? Who is she? You're nodding. What does she do? No, the lady behind you. Who is who's Aung San Suu Kyi? Yes, her father was General Aung San, who was the first leader of, pre, of Free Burma. Um, Myanmar, Burma is the same country. She was under house arrest for 16 years, by, by, kept there by the military government. She's now been released and she is now effectively the head of the government. And sadly in Myanmar, there is a terrible crisis. I don't know if you've been reading about it, but the Muslim population has been expelled and many men, women and children have been brutally killed and beaten and raped. It's a terrible story. I have supported Aung San Suu Kyi for the best part of 10 years and I wrote this play to help her get out of house arrest. So personally I'm really devastated but um, I'm going to be in Myanmar very soon to talk to colleagues of mine to see if we can continue developing educational links. But that's not the point of me showing you this. Can you see she has a blanket here? This is a prison blanket because my one woman show was set in a prison. And this blanket becomes a child who is shot by the military. So she cradles the blanket, and then when she drops the blanket, it symbolizes the death of the child. I tell you this because in your plays, you can make objects become very important and full of meaning, and you can transform them from one thing into another. This is the magic of theater, yeah? So don't just think about dialogue. Think about objects. Think about the way it looks. And don't think about film because theatre is slow. In film, you can jump cut, right, from A to B to C. In theatre, it takes time to move people around the stage. And you don't want a set that takes so long to change the audience have gone to sleep. I used to be a director of a theatre company in London called Polka for Children, children's theatre. And one of my uh, colleagues directed a terrible play where every scene change was 10 minutes long. Everybody lost the will to live. It was terrible. So don't ever do that. Okay. This is a very bad photo, but would any of you want to drink that water? No, it's disgusting. The reason I show you this is I want you to believe and not worry that your first draft of your play will be truly terrible. Every single writer, no matter how famous, always thinks their first draft is rubbish. So just embrace your rubbish, love it, and it will get better. But you have to let the rubbish out like you have to let the dirty water out, just by, by writing and writing and writing, and not worrying about what it is. Yeah? There's a word in English called perfectionism, all right? What does it mean? If you're a perfectionist, what do you, what's your problem? 
You want everything to be perfect. Listen, nothing is perfect in this world. So just get on with it, right? It's much more fun to make something. Uh, and it'll be perfect one day, but not straight away. And here you can see the beautiful clean water that you can drink comes when you keep writing. Rewrite, rewrite, rewrite. The Lady of Burma went through 25 rewrites. It's hard work, but it's worth it. Okay, we now have a series of really crucial questions. Where does the conflict lie? Um, in terms of Romeo and Juliet, the conflict was between the two families, right? In Macbeth, it's between Macbeth and the, and the people who are trying to, to kill him and save Scotland. Um, think about that. It's so important. Have you ever read or heard of, I guess it's Shakespeare's most famous play, Hamlet? Yeah? Who knows the story of Hamlet? Who can remember the story of Hamlet? Okay. Um, Yes, the, yes, there's a failure. He, what does he fail to do? Um, I, it's been a while. Oh, don't worry, don't worry. Hamlet is a prince of Denmark, and his uncle kills his father. And he, it's his duty to revenge the death of his father. But Hamlet is so indecisive, he does nothing for the entire play. And only right at the end does he do something, yeah? And what's so fantastic about that is the conflict is in his head between the desire to act and the desire to do nothing, yeah? So, what is at stake and are the stakes high enough? Okay, going back to my guy who gets up, breaks, brushes his teeth, have breakfast, go to work, come home, watch the telly, go to bed. He's risking nothing, yeah? It's boring. However, if his boss had said to him, if you are late one more time, you will lose your job. Then that, the stakes are now really high, which is why he kills the taxi driver, right? Yeah, it's a crazy story, but there we go. Um, anybody got any idea what this means? Can I plant bombs that will go off later? Any idea what that means? Yeah? Yes, it's a metaphor for, for something that happens in a play. You're quite right. What, what do you think I mean? No, you weren't. You weren't. You were just scratching your nose. It's fine. It's allowed. Listen, in my classes, you better not scratch your nose because I'll just think you want to speak. Okay, now you're all going to be really stressed. You can scratch your nose. It's fine. Um, basically, you give the audience clues as to what may come in the future, but they don't know what it means. So suddenly... For example, Chekhov says, if you have a gun stuck on the wall in Act 1, it has to go off, bang, in Act 3. So you're leaving lots of questions and clues. Um, has anyone heard of The Mousetrap by Agatha Christie? Um, it's a really cheesy murder mystery that's been on in London for 66 years. Wow, can you think of the money? My God. Um, I'm working for The Mousetrap right now, uh, in schools trying to teach them how to write murder mysteries and it's a very fascinating structure but it's all about leaving clues as to who the murderer is and you got to make sure the audience don't guess otherwise there's no point so you must always look to surprise your audience okay so also the consequences of any action if you have something really important happen in Act 1, don't forget about it. If you have a stone, right, and I throw it into a pond or a lake, what happens? What do you call it? You're too quiet. What happens? It, there's a wave or a ripple. So think about that. Everything that happens in your play, you must know what the ripple is. You must know what the wave is. Don't forget it, yeah? Excellent. Ooh. Last of all, this word, exposition. Can you all see it? Exposition. Does anybody know what that word means? It's really important in plays. It means to expose, to reveal everything you know about a character. So if your character stands up in front of the audience in the first five minutes and basically says everything about themselves, 
How boring is that? You know too much. Never tell your audience everything. Keep stuff back. So slowly, slowly, you reveal things and then there are surprises. Okay? So, remember that. It's really important. Because sometimes young writers think they got to give the whole backstory straight away, otherwise nobody understands. That is not true. People like to put the pieces of the jigsaw puzzle slowly together by themselves. Yeah? You should trust your audience. They, are, they will be intelligent. They will be thinking about every single thing you write and every single object, every single piece of scenery, every single piece of costume will have a meaning. Yeah? Good. Okay. Transitions. Does anybody know what the word in English transition means? Change. Very good. Change. In this case, I'm talking about scene changes. Moving one scene to another. Now, if you have a play, um, I, wrote, I wrote this play which was published. Uh, one, of the, one of my published plays, I only have two, but you know, hey, I'm still proud. Um, this is a play about witchcraft in the 17th century. Now, I know you have shamans, shamans in, in, in Korea. They're a bit like, uh, the, I think, the idea of witches in the, in the UK. These were 10 women who were hanged for being witches in 1612, a long time ago. Um, when I first produced this, I directed it as well. And uh, at the beginning of the play, the lights went up. And the next scene, the lights went down. Lights went up, lights went down. Lights went up, lights went down. What do you think is wrong with that? What might be wrong with that as a, as a rhythm for a play? Well, yeah? Uh, I think no transition. There's just a loss of energy between each scene. As soon as the lights go down, the audience is lost. Switch off. All the actors then have to pick up the energy again. So if you have dramatic transitions where one thing starts as the other one finishes, you have energy. Now, all plays are simply a flow of energy. Yeah, Remember that. It is not like a series of chapters in a book. Everything has to move forward. Yeah, um, And this friend of mine, Brian McAvera, who's a writer, said, these transitional moments, these changes, have to have fricative energy. OK, I'm going to give you a little, little joke task to do. Put your hands together like this. And now do this. Really hard. Really, really hard. What do you feel? What do you feel? Hot energy, right? Friction. That's friction, OK? Fricative energy. So between one scene and another, you need to generate energy. Yeah? OK. Yeah. Plays are like football. How many of you like football in this room? And please, God, don't let it just all be the men. Who likes football? Stick your hand up. Nobody. <laughs> you like football. Thank God. Korea's got a good team. You're in the World Cup. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, so, I, I am producing a Korean zombie musical with some MA students of mine from Seoul. And I was in Seoul last year uh, working with uh, Korean uh, singers on this. So for me, I have to support Korea in the World Cup as well as England. Of course, if Korea has to fight England, I'm sorry. For, you can forget it. I'm going to support England. Anyway, but you must all have seen a football match, even if you hate it, right? So why is a play like a football match? Somebody who hasn't spoken before, please, don't be shy. Attackers and defenders. Conflict. Very good. What else? What else? A lot of movements. A lot of different movements. A lot of stuff happening at the same time. For the one goal. For the one goal. Absolutely. Let me ask you another question. Do you know what's going to happen when you go to see a football match? Unpredictable. Thank you very much. Completely unpredictable. Your play should be unpredictable. Yeah? You should think about that. Um, surprises, changes of pace. Now, you know, um, one of the most strange things about the witchcraft play when I did it first was one of my writer friends sent me a letter. This is a long time ago when people wrote letters. <laughs> God. Um, said to me, I want you to go tomorrow night with a stopwatch and time the length of each scene. 
What do you think I discovered when I, I timed each scene? It was really weird. You wouldn't know, so I'll tell you. It, the, each scene was exactly the same length, and I didn't even know it. And that set up a rhythm like this, which is what? Is this interesting? No, it is boring. It's monotonous. So, you see, you need to think about the length of the scenes. Maybe have a long scene, a short scene, a loud scene, a quiet scene. It's all about variety to keep the audience really focused. Yeah, as we've already discussed. Location, location, location. Now, um, has anyone read or seen the play Equus by Peter Schaffer? It's a film, very famous film as well. It's a terrible story about a young man who, f who makes love to his girlfriend but fails. He's humiliated and he blinds some horses. Now, in the first draft, he had the young man leave the stable where the horses were, go all the way across London or wherever, sorry, uh, from his girlfriend's place to the stables and blind the horses there. And a friend of his said, no, this is crazy. Why don't you make the horses witness his failure, his sexual failure? Because then there's a motive, a reason for him blinding the horses. So you see, the location is powerful. So when you come to write your plays in a minute, you need to think about your, your location. Okay? Think about who your audience is. Do you think a play about blinding horses and sex would be good for children? Yes? No? Probably not. Okay. And the last thing I want to say to you is a quote from a friend of mine at Goldsmiths. Uh, she's a, um, a Danish Nigerian gay writer, Mojisole Adebayo. She says, Theatre can change hearts and minds. A beautiful work of theatre can humanize the other in the eye of the hater. What do you think that means? Any thoughts? Basically, we live in a world full of prejudice. In Myanmar, they are very prejudiced against Muslims. There are many people in my country who are very prejudiced against Muslims. Um, you may know about prejudice within Korea. I don't know your culture well enough, but there may be some groups which are isolated. Uh, gay people are often subject to, to, to prejudice. If you show a beautiful work of theatre where you bring to life the lives of these people that you do not know, you can empathise with them. The word empathy, do you know what that means? It's like when you step into their shoes, when you live their life, when you see through their eyes. And then we realize, actually, we are all human. Yeah? Basically, we, we live, we die, we love, we cry. We do it all. And the fact that we, you and me, we have a different language, you know, you're learning English. You're, you, you'll eventually be fluent. I'm going to try and learn Korean, but I'll always be terrible. <laughs> so luckily, your English is going to be better than my Korean. <laughs> Okay, well, now, thank you so much for listening to the presentation. Um, this is very much the kind of style of teaching you would get at Goldsmiths, with me forcing you to ask, answer questions, and you, you resisting me. Um, so, uh, just before we do the practical exercise, has anybody got a question they wanted to ask uh, about playwriting? Yeah, please. It can do. Now, normally, theatre plays do not get storyboarded. Normally, it's a film that you do a storyboard for. But, but I'm going to use storyboards for the murder mysteries with the children in the school. Yeah, use a storyboard if you want to. If it helps you tell the story, that's really cool. Anything that helps you tell the story. Good idea. Any other questions? Yes, yes. Uh, I work for Media and Communications. We do animation, stop motion, as well as, as drawn, as every form of animation. We do filmmaking, editing. 
we do sound design in film, we do screenwriting, uh, we do uh, radio drama, that's me. If you do radio, you got me, bad luck. Um, yeah, so we do everything to do with the media. And um, I'm going to send um, your, 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 your leader, the, what, your, your, the EDM controller, <laughs> um, a load of PowerPoints, which I'm sure you'll share with, with the students, yeah? Any other questions? If you think of a question, please, um, uh, EDM have my, my email address. I'm more than happy for them to give it to you and you for emailing me and I will reply to you personally if I can. Okay. Now, you're going to work in groups of two, so I'm going to choose the groups of two. So you two are going to work together, so perhaps one of you could move and you two are going to work together. And you two are going to work together, so maybe you can go and sit with this lady here. You two can work together. You two are going to work together. Yeah? You two? You two? You two? Um, you two are going to work together. You're going to work with this lovely young lady here. You two are together. You two? Yeah? You two are going to work together. And you three will work together. Okay. So can you please get out uh, one piece of paper? You only need one big piece of paper that you can, you can give each other and fold over. So if you've got paper in a book, I'm afraid you'll have to tear one sheet out. We only need one. You don't both have to destroy your books. She's already done it for you. Okay. This is a very simple game. Please don't take it too seriously. But is everybody in a pair or a group of three? Yeah, everyone's in a pair. Nobody on their own. Fantastic. So, I want you to choose A and B. And believe me, being A is no better than being B. So don't worry about it, yeah? So A and B. A, without showing B, is going to write a location at the very, can I borrow this a sec? At the very top of the paper and going to fold it over so that B can't see it, yeah? So that's the first thing you need to do. All the A's write a location. It could be Gangnam Station. It could be the bottom of the sea. It could be the moon. I don't care. Just quickly write a location and fold it over and don't show your partner. Don't discuss it. Just do it. Write it and then fold it over. Anywhere. Okay? Everybody done it. Now, Give the piece of paper to B. B, you are now going to write a character name, age, and job. Name, age, and job. Can be a man or a woman. Anything in between. Name, age, job. Very quickly. This is B. And then fold the paper over again. Okay, now hand the piece of paper back to A, or B, I don't know, I got confused. Now you're going to write another character, name, age, job, yeah? A again? Uh, yeah, you give it back to the other person, so whoever, whoever did their character, now the other person does a character, yeah? Except you've got to do it here so you can fold it like that, yeah? Don't forget you've got to do it so you can fold it over and cover it up so that, that B or A can't see it, yeah? Name, age, and a job. Don't even think about it. This is just letting it out. It doesn't matter. This is not great art. This is just fun, I hope. I hope. Sorry? A should write the, the next character, age, the age of the character, the job they do, and um, what else did I say? The name. Oh, that was the first thing you have to do, right at the beginning. Okay? All right. Now, finally, give it back to the other person, and they're going to write the reason these two people are, people are meeting. So now you write the reason they are meeting. Maybe they're a f at a funeral, a wedding, maybe they're in a classroom, whatever, it doesn't matter, the reason they meet. Okay? The reason they meet. So just write that down. And, and as soon as you've written the reason they meet, show everything to the other person. And then, on another piece of paper, I want you to write one page of dialogue. And we'll just have time to hear that read, some of the things, okay? Okay, off you go. 
Okay, let's stop there. Stop, stop. It doesn't matter if you haven't written anything. It doesn't matter if you only have a few lines. It's just an exercise to help you understand that you need to. It's a way of starting work. It's just a game to get you started. But I do know there are some people really, really want to read those out. Um, so, do you want to read yours out? Doesn't matter. Do you just want to read a few lines? No. Okay, you don't have to. Does anybody want to read their few lines of dialogue out? Do you want to read yours out? Read, read out your, your dialogue. Yeah? Okay, so we've got one brave couple here. Can you tell us who the characters are? Um, you, do you want to come up here? Oh, bro, great, come on. Well, don't you want to come and read it with him? <laughs> okay, we'll just read the, we'll just hear this one and then then we'll have a Q and A about Goldsmiths. Yes, tell us the whole story. Okay, okay. Uh, we are okay. I explain. Uh, uh, explain the story. Yes, two person, uh, one man, one man appeared. His name is Noah, called Noah. And 21 years old, uh, he is working as a uh, artificial intelligent engineer. Oh, <laughs> wow! <laughs> okay. Yes, we are met. We are met in uh, Hala Mountain. Oh. <laughs> Why is that important? Hala Mountain. Hala Mountain is the, is the mountain in Jeju Island. That's why I like oh. Jeju Island. Oh. It's, uh, uh, it's natural. Uh, very beautiful. Natural. Okay. Because, uh, because, because uh, there are the lab, lab of AI. Oh, right, okay. Wow. Why, why we meet? Yeah. To, uh, to, uh, to protect AI's rebellion for human beings. Okay, great. Uh, so uh, AI, uh, AI start to uh, kill human. Oh my God. <laughs> so oh we no. Are, we are two uh, uh, so young as a nurse. Okay. Uh, she cure, cure the human. Wow, you and got a whole story. That's so cool. And, and Noah, as an AI engineer, <laughs> He, uh, he protected, uh, he invented the, the computer virus. Oh my uh, god, this, the, this is a whole movie. Yeah. <laughs> AI, so we can uh, protect from the AI the Earth. Great. Oh. Do you want to read any dialogue or is that it? Huh? Do you want to read the dialogue? Is there any dialogue or that's is just the story? Yeah, just Fantastic, well done, well done. Okay, don't worry, I'm not going to ask anybody else. <laughs> You can relax. <laughs> right, um, the last, uh, the last um, sort of 20 minutes or so is basically for you to ask any questions about goldsmiths or playwriting. I've got a little, I've got a few, um, if I can find my other PowerPoint, I will show you. This is London, very beautiful city, best city in the world, of course, I think so. Um, and uh, it's a very big city, like Seoul. Um, it has many people and lots of uh, people from around the world. More languages are spoken in London than any other city in the world. Um, we have many, many visitors and it is a world centre for theatre. So if you're interested in the arts, then London is a good place. Um, it's a very... Oh, never mind, I'm not going back. This is the British Library. It's one of the best libraries in the world. And you, as students at Goldsmiths, would be able to join this library. So that's something to think about. Um, we have a lot of employers in London. I know Brexit is a disaster for my country, but never mind. <laughs> you can still come and visit us. Um, uh, I guess it will be very much like your experience of Korean universities, you know, seminars, lectures, etc. pretty much the same. Um, this is just a venue where they have uh, rock gigs. Uh, this is a park in London. I don't know how many of you have been to London. Anybody? Well done, yeah? I hope you liked it. Um, London is full of parks, and for me, having trees around me is really important, so uh, there are many parks in London. 
This is Greenwich Park, very famous part of town. Um, many museums, over 200, theatres, etc. Um, this is a picture of the Globe Theatre where they do Shakespeare uh, in, a, in a replica of Shakespeare's own theatre, which is just amazing. If you go to London, you really have to see a show there. Did you see a show there? No. Next time. This is the Royal Festival Hall on the South Bank where they do concerts, orchestral music. Anybody play an instrument in this room? Violin? No? Drums? Electric guitar? Nothing? Oh, dear. Yeah? Okay, Harry Potter, who's a fan? Yeah, okay, so you can come and see the Harry Potter show. Um, this is Stonehenge. This is a very ancient monument uh, from uh, thousands of years ago. The good thing is you can also go under the sea and visit Europe. From London, you can see Rome and Paris really, really easily. So don't just think about coming to the UK to see the UK. You have the whole of Europe at your doorstep. Um, and many Korean students of mine make a point of going to Italy and France. Uh, there's lots of work in, if you need to support yourself, there's lots of part-time work you can get in London. Um, this is about the University of London. It's the third oldest in the country. Um, and you can join any of the libraries of the 18 different colleges. So you would have a lot of choice. Um, the, the campus is very close to the city, about 10 minutes from London Bridge. Uh, and it's in a real community. It's not like Oxford or Cambridge stuck up, you know, in an ivory tower. This is a picture of the campus. Uh, this is the, the sort of uh, picnic area. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where I work in this big building here. This is where we have all the digital animation and filmmaking. Um, for the first year, you would probably live in the college. And in the second year, you would probably find a house with your friends slightly further out. Um, we've got a great reputation. A lot of artists have won major awards. Um, this is a pretty picture of the main building in the autumn. And this is the art department. Again, a pretty picture, I think. Um, we've talked about that. Here is where the college is, and you can see it's really close to everything. Um, these are the subjects we do. Anthropology, art, cultural studies, English, computing. Confucius Institute we have uh, if you want to learn Chinese, but I guess you could do that here just as easily. Design, for some of you might be interested in that. Education, English, history. There's the Institute for Creative and Cultural, entre I can't say it, Entrepreneurship. Uh, that is for postgrads wanting to do business in the arts. Management studies, media and comms where I work, music, politics, psychology, social therapeutic studies, sociology, theatre and performance where I also work, and finally visual cultures. So don't come to me if you want to do physics, chemistry, maths, astronomy, astrology. No, don't bother. Um, okay, I think we've said that. Um, Lots of very famous people have been to Goldsmiths, and one of them is this guy. Has anyone heard of Steve McQueen? He directed Seven Years a Slave, and he won an Oscar for that, and he was at Goldsmiths. Um, and this is a smiley student. Of course, I'm going to show you a smiley, you know? Everyone, everyone's happy, right? Uh, another picture of Goldsmiths, and that's it. So, um, I really love working at Goldsmiths. It's, it's an exciting and very friendly place. I teach a lot of Korean students and um, uh, it's, it's always fun to, 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 to work with students from, from this part of the world. And if you need support with your English, you can do a special course to prepare you for the degree for 12 weeks in the summer. And while you're at Goldsmiths, you can have a lot of support from personal tutors and so on. So you should never feel alone. Uh, I know people will feel homesick but we are aware of the issue and, and you'll get support for that too. The food is not fantastic because English food is not fantastic. <laughs> but there's plenty of Korean restaurants around, so you'll be fine. So uh, I've been asked in the last sort of 20 minutes to have a Q&A. Um, so now is your chance, if you want to, to ask me anything you like um, about goldsmiths, about playwriting, about how to make a career in the arts, uh, anything at all. Um, and if you don't ask me questions, I'm going to ask you questions about you. So, <laughs> so you better ask me some questions. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Arsenal. I support Arsenal, yeah. I'm not, I'm not fan fan fanatical, but I do like Arsenal, yeah. And they live, uh, Arsenal, the Emirates, is quite near where I live, so 
Yeah, but I can't afford to go. I just watch it on the telly. You know, lecturers don't get paid very much. If any of you want to be a lecturer, bad luck. Um, any other questions about anything at all? You can ask about me if you want. Um, yeah. Yes, you need to keep in mind that your audience may not remember stuff. So you need to remind them of the critical uh, elements. Are you thinking of writing a novel? Uh, actually, she is. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. I tried to write a novel, but I thought it was too difficult. But you should really try. Just make sure that you keep all the characters alive. Don't forget people. Don't, you, people like to know what happens to everybody in a story and in a novel. Are you a fan of Game of Thrones? No? Anybody like Game of Thrones? Stick your hand up, please. Fantastic. I love Game of Thrones. You should watch Game of Thrones because it's a very, very long series and it's brilliantly written because they keep all the characters alive, don't they? I love it. No, they kill everything. Well, they kill. No, that's true. No, you're right. They kill all the characters, but you know why they die. I love Tyrion, the dwarf, the short guy. He's such a hero, don't you think? Oh, you don't know about it. You, you like it, yeah? Any other? Yeah. Uh, I don't know anybody personally who, who works for the BBC who's Korean, but lots of students do work for the BBC. I had a Singaporean student who works for the BBC. Um, you can get work in London and you can get a work permit if you find a job. So it is possible to make work in, 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 in London. Um, it, to be honest with you, if you're a creative artist of any kind and you're Korean, that's really interesting in London because what you do is so unlike anything we do, it's automatically interesting. So. It's like a bit of bullshit that you can bring with you, you know? Yeah, think about it. Any other, any other questions? While you're thinking, let me ask you some questions, right? How many of you, uh, apart from the young lady here, is thinking of writing a novel, a play, or a screenplay? Actually, yeah? actually I, I, got, I, I told my 13-year-old comic book. Oh, fantastic. Graphic novel. Oh, fantastic. Wow. You should sell this. Everyone, these are, these are 20,000 won. Come and, come and get them at the front. Oh, this is great. Really well drawn. Fantastic. Now this, if you wanted to go to Goldsmiths, would be part of your portfolio to demonstrate what you can do. If any of you are thinking of going to Goldsmiths and you want to do film or graphic art or illustration or animation, you should send us your stuff uh, and then we could do an interview with you on Skype. I'd like to read this, but I must give it back to you. <laughs> Maybe you can email it to me. Um, yeah, very good. Yeah, you, you, you should, if you're going to be working in the creative world, you should have a portfolio, and one day you should have a website for yourself. Um, I'm more than happy for you to look at my website. Um, can I draw on this? Is it okay to write on here? Um, Yeah, I mean, if you want to have a look, you're very welcome. It just gives you all the productions that I've directed and you can get a sense of what I've been up to. And um, I'll put my email address here too if you want to ask me any questions. So that is rshannon, r.shannon at gold.ac.uk. Um, yeah, if you want any advice about Goldsmiths or London, please don't hesitate. I would be happy to help you. Just give me a bit of time because if you all email me, I'll be doing it for years. Um, okay, uh, what else? Um, all I can say is that in terms of your future career, you may not know what you want to do with your lives. You're very young. Why should you know everything? But if you want to be creative, what I can say is Goldsmiths is probably the, one of the best places in the UK and possibly wider in Europe for you to come. And I say that, I teach at many universities, but for me it's my favorite place and it's very creative. And you would be really challenged. And I think a, a University of London degree is worth something internationally. So it, I hope would be a really good investment for you. Um, okay, I'm running out of, <laughs> I'm running out of steam. Uh, shall we, can we wind up now? Okay, I just want to say what a pleasure it has been for me to meet you all and I, I really wish you good luck in all your careers. Thank you very much.